So my story, I'm not bringing you a science story today. I'm bringing you a science community story. Um, because that is just as important and just as exciting. And the science community is very active online and it's very interesting to watch. So the headline of my story this week is scientists rename human genes to stop Microsoft Excel from misreading them as dates. (laughs) That sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) To be be perfectly honest, uh, Excel is a great, it's a great, great program, but it's also the worst. Absolutely the worst. Sometimes it's easier to rewrite genetics than to update Excel. (laughs) (laughs) So basically, scientists have a system for categorizing genes, which is a name for the gene and then an alphanumeric code for that gene. And the alphanumeric code is in some way derivative of the name of the gene. Mm -hmm. And this is known as its symbol. And because of a flaw in Microsoft Excel, 27 human genes have had to be renamed. For example, so if you were to open Excel and you were to type March 1 into Excel, it's going to quite logically convert that into the date, the 1st of March. This is fine. This is fine for like 99% of applications of using Excel until you're working with, for example, the membrane associated ring (laughs) CH type finger one gene. March 1. And that's, you know, seems kind of funny and a little bit stupid. But one study from 2016 found that one fifth of all the studies that they checked had errors caused by Excel. (laughs) (laughs) That makes total sense. I'd never thought of that. I'd never put two and two together. (laughs) Oh my God. The worst part about Excel as well is that Microsoft is so backwards compatible that like, obviously Mm. if you make something or if you've got an Excel file from forever ago it will basically still be working in current excel yeah like they still they make it they make it work which is very handy yeah but you can't change too much because (laughs) if you you change excel to not register dates like that then there will be companies for for example that have been um that that have got excel files that their entire company is based on if you update excel so that say march 1 doesn't automatically turn to march 1 you've suddenly ruined a number of businesses yeah so as Corey's kind of kind of alluding to here, Excel doesn't offer an option to turn this off. And even if it did, even if it did offer an option to turn this off, the problem is if you then exported your data into what's called a CSV sheet, which we may you may use, James, you may use CSVs at some point. Corey, you may use CSVs. Yeah, Basically, it's, nice. it's a common way of sharing data between applications. And if you, do, if you do that and you don't save your format, then even if you got everything perfect, another scientist can import that data into their Excel and Excel reads that data and goes, hmm, March 1, ah, great. Yes, the 1st of March. <laughs> oh my Lord, that's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> to fix this problem, the, the body, the standardizing body in, in charge of sort of standardizing names of genes, which is called the Hugo Gene Nomenclature Committee, has renamed a bunch of genes. So March 1, M-A-R-C-H-1, has become M-A-R-C-H-F-1, the finger one. Right. Sept1, which is a gene (laughs) family required for psychokinesis, which is cell division, I believe, Cory. Cytokinesis. Um, Side, sorry, psychokinesis, psychokinesis would be psychokinesis would be the movement of, with one's mind or the movement of a mind. <laughs> ah. That sounds kind of cool though. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's very, psychokinesis is a superpower. Psychokinesis, yeah. we all and do. Out, out of interest, which gene is which gene controls psy, psychokinesis? Psychokinesis. Well, uh, the, it's the Professor X gene. Luke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fair enough. I don't think Excel is going to accidentally. Um, rename that one (laughs) and it's also it's required in the maintenance of cellular morphology which Corey, do you know what that is it's the uh cell shape basically cell shape there you go (laughs) and that's called sept one and it's been renamed (laughs) septin one which obviously would have become september first um other genes have been renamed as well that had common words in such as wars and cars have now become Wars One and Cars One, the best Cars movie. So thank you for that representation. The only Cars movie as far as I'm concerned. (laughs) (laughs) Reading about this and kind of the ridiculousness of this reminded me of kind of the opposite that happens in some of the space community. Uh, So for example, NASA has... um, a lot of really funny, uh, they seem to do the opposite thing. Whereas, so so 
the the gene scientists are trying to avoid words. NASA seems to whether whether deliberately or not, I don't think. I think it's deliberate. They have loads of really interesting acronyms that um that they use for some of their technology. For example, Artemis is the acceleration, reconnection, turbulence, <laughs> and electrodynamics on the moon's surface with the sun. I, I think they might have just wanted a cool name. Doris. Doris, Doris, the Dop Doppler orbitography by radio positioning integrated by satellite. There's Calypso and there's Messenger. And my favorite, which I found, which I couldn't find out if, it was, if this was by NASA or not, but this is a real thing, was Avocado, <laughs> a virtual observatory <laughs> census to address dwarfs' origins. I think it means dwarf stars, not literal dwarfs. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> I'll tell you this, it's 100% on purpose. I, you think, I think you see it, you're right, you see it more with sort of, um, let's call them space scientists. They, they're mm. total nerds and they love naming things after things after already actual exist. actual things, yeah. If, yeah. I mean, you see, I mean, biologists have their own, have their own um, sort of, they have their own fun as well. You've got the Sonic the Hedgehog gene as well. I was literally about, to, you about to talk about this. What is the Sonic well, the Hedgehog gene? Yeah, well, please tell no, go on, Go on, look. <laughs> Okay, okay. So basically, what I was going to say was basically this world where we have things like Cars 1 and Wars 1 and this kind of thing, it, it's much more mature than it used to be, much more helpful and, and um, non-human than it used to be. Back in the sort of early days of genetic, um, bio, like gen genetic research, there was a gene given the name Sonic the Hedgehog. And that name has still stuck. It's still there. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I went on and I found um, geneticshomereference.gov and it's now called the SHH gene. gene so right. Sonic Hedgehog gene. Yeah. But the, the paragraph below that that says, the SHH gene provides instructions for making a protein called Sonic Hedgehog. <laughs> Sonic Hedgehog plays a role in cell growth, cell specialization, <laughs> and normal shaping patterning of the body. Sonic Hedgehog is necessary for development of the front part of the brain. But now there are more clear rules. So gene names have to minimize confusion. They have to be unique and brief and specific, and they cannot use subscript or superscript. They can only contain Latin letters and Arabic numerals and they should not spell out words or names particularly offensive words or names ideally in any language and i did actually go on to this same website geneticshomereference.gov and i tried typing in a loads of rude words and it said sorry we couldn't find any results for <laughs> dick in our database <laughs> so it, it has stuck so the reason for this basically um so th there was an interview with l Elspeth Br Brufford, the coordinator of this um, body that standardizes the name for genes. And she said, basically, why this has to happen is imagine having a clinician having to explain to a parent that their child has a mutation in a particular gene. And then the parent asks, what gene? And the, the doctor has to be like, oh, it's the Sonic the Hedgehog gene. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it is actually very important and there has been a kind of mixed mixed reaction to this with some scientists being like this is ridiculous the inability for microsoft to change this has resulted in change of the human genome categorization system oh. rather than just a piece of software but ultimately in the long term this is a good thing because sure you can fix microsoft if you want, you can fix Microsoft Excel if you want, but somewhere down the line, you'll use another piece of software and another piece of software. And if you're calling yeah. things March and September and war and things like that, it's just not good practice, not good scientific practice. Although interestingly, um, biologists, while they have named genes, uh, they, they sort of, they've stopped naming genes with um, more interesting names. They still have, they still have animals to, to have fun with. There is a, there's a, there's an animal I think it's an animal. There's an animal called, um, whose scientific mm. name is, I think, uh, Spongy Formy Square Pantsy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> if you enjoyed that clip, head over to patreon.com forward slash SciGuys where you can find the full show. Or you can stay here and catch up on all SciGuys episodes. Or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at SciGuysPod to find out when we're doing more live shows. <laughs>